So the software that we're going to learn to draw our serial box in is called Publisher. And so if you go to your star window here, sometimes it's already there for you, Microsoft Publisher, but if it's not, you can type it in here and it will come up. Now, first of all, what you need to do is simply select the blank page and then you'll get this white canvas, which is basically what you're going to draw your design on. Now, up here we've got in our ribbon, we've got lots of different tabs, and we can change the page design. This is where we can change the size if we want to. We're happy with A4. We can change the orientation, but we often obviously will want portrait. And we can change the margin, the print margins. I often go with narrow there, so we have a very narrow margin here. And the way it works is that we basically use a combination of different shapes. Now, it might seem quite basic, to begin with, but you'll see that as we go through what we can do with it, you can actually get very professional looking. Um, and what I'm going to show you first of all is how to change the background of your page. Now you can do it in different ways. You can just change the colour of the background, but I prefer to do it with individual shapes because I think you can do a bit more with it. So for example, if we draw a rectangle, and if you go over the margin, I think it's fine, um, we can then change the colour here. So, for example, we can do a different solid colour. But often with serial boxes, there's a gradient. There's a change in colour. Um, and if you right-click, in fact, sorry, if you click up here and you go to gradient, you can do different effects with your gradient. So you can have it fade from one colour to another. If you want to change the colours, that goes from white to blue. If you want to change the colours, you go to gradient and you go right down to the bottom to more gradients. And then we can actually say two colours, and we can change the colours that it fades from. So I'm going to go blue to green. And then we can even change some of the effects on it as well. If we press OK, we have blue to green. We can also do three colours. If we get quite clever with this, we can copy and paste that square. We spin it round, so this icon here allows us to spin. Okay, we want blue at the top actually, so we can go that way. We can go to gradients again, more gradients. We can just keep one of the colours and change one. So we could go from green to blue to yellow. Press OK. It's not quite right there, so what I would do is I would spin this one because we want the green touching, don't we? Why is it not? We want green at the bottom. The colour keeps flipping when I do that, doesn't it? So I'll have to do it this way. Yeah, I'll have to do it this way. Change the order of them here. We'll have to go colour one, green, colour two, blue, like that. And then we can combine them. And we have it fading together. Now that big black line, we can get rid of that as well. So if we select one and press shift to select two multiple things, we can then go back to the outline. Now this symbol's for the outline. We just say no outline. We can move these down to try and get the colours to really merge quite effectively so you can't see the lines. You see that? Okay. And then these are separate squares, aren't they? But we, we can then group them together. So if we select them all and right click, we can group them. So that becomes one part now. Okay. So that's the first kind of thing I want to show you. Now, what I'm going to show you now, I'm just going to look at some past examples. I'll quickly... get some past examples up of some little features that we can do. And so this is actually quite a basic example, but what I want to show you is how to get images from Google with a transparent background and combine them together. Okay? So, to make it look refreshing. So I'm going to show you how, you know, all these are separate. That now is one grouped image. If I ungroup the whole thing, you can see that there's lots of images within there that have been drawn and put in. Okay. So I'm going to show you how you can find images on Google that you can use for your design. So if we want a something like this, we can try and find an image of a hand pouring milk. Now if you select these, they'll often have a white background, but we want a transparent background. So if you select more, 
Um, settings even, usually it's more. Images, tools, there it is, tools. We go color, we can go transparent. And now it will give us only transparent images. So there's the one I actually used, but we could use another one. But I think that's probably one of the better ones. So we could use this, for example. So we click the image, we view the image, you can see there's a transparent background. We can copy that into our publisher file. And it'll have a transparent background with the effect that we want. Okay? We could then do the same for a cereal bowl, for other features, or you could simply draw the other parts that you might want using a combination of shapes. So, for example, to draw a bowl, you might do something like this. Starts off with a very kind of simple linear shape. We can add fill. We can then colour it in if we want to do a red bowl. So that will be like the top area of the bowl. I might colour that white now, so it looks like it's filled with milk. And then I will add another shape. Let's try this one. I will then colour that one in. We'll move it to the back. If you right click, you can change the order. So you can change the order here. So I'm going to move it backwards. If I keep pressing it, oh, that one. There we go. So being creative with these different shapes, and I, I want that one at the front, don't I? So I can. You can use it here as well. Bring forward. I might want that one, but we can basically using that image, I might crop that bottom part of the milk out because I don't really want that bit. And then we have a, quite a realistic effect there of milk being poured into a bowl. Okay. So basically using Publisher, you can combine shapes, you can overlap them in a clever way. We can do clever things with gradient, with color transformation to try and get a really professional looking box. Now, once you have finished your dissection of your cereal box design and you've annotated it and you've explained the reasons why each design choice has been made with regards to the font, the colors, the layout, and so on, you can then go onto Publisher and start just experimenting with these features. Has everyone got that?